Hi guys. <clears throat> I don't know what it is in this chair that's getting ready to break. I'll find out soon enough. Uh, anyway, it is another snow-covered midwinter day here and I guess we are now in mid-December of 2022. It is a Sunday morning. <clears throat> Sunday morning coming down, the snow coming down. That would be Sunday, December 11th, 2022, I believe, and so uh, this is how I started my day. This is the very first thing that I did to start my day after peeking through the curtains at the blizzard falling down outside my window. I went over to the uh, bottomless pit of despair known as medium.com to see if I could dig up yet another new voice <clears throat> talking about various aspects of the collapse of the planet. And you need to look for those chippies out there in the snow like that. And I came up with this fellow, never heard of this man, <clears throat> Antonio Malonio. Love that name, Antonio Malonio. Antonio has 1.3 thousand followers now, including me. Antonio says he is writing for change, and I think we can figure this out, <clears throat> that he has a clear anti-capitalist agenda. So take it away, Antonio Malonio, with your clear anti-capitalist agenda <clears throat> with this fine essay to start off another depressing day in the collapse. There is no one to effing blame. Yes, there is no one. There's just eight. I would rephrase this. There's two ways. There is no one to effing blame, but there is eight billion too effing blame. But anyway, uh, we don't talk about uh, those 8 billion <clears throat> to effing blame in this article at least. Alright, take it away Antonio. There is no one to effing blame. Who is responsible for the current state of affairs for the world as it is? A capitalist dystopia offering nothing no perspective, no, no, no hope of freedom, a life spent in the hamster wheel of daily grind, enriching others, those who adapted early enough while struggling to survive, a life estranged from each other, with no sense of community, no sense of purpose, because there is none. Uh, constantly being fed lies and an unstoppable stream of propaganda. This is how you must live to be happy. This is what you must buy and consume, consume forever. Yes, and, and guys, this is a long, involved piece. Uh, I, I'm going to kind of mash this up and uh, move through some extended quotes. I'm putting the link on here, so if you want to read the parts that I didn't get to, you can. Uh, so, anyway, where were we, Antonio? Whole generations, that is generations plural, in the West spending their lives in disillusionment and the always present, nagging, never disappearing, painful, soul crushing feeling of a kind of emptiness they, we, cannot explain. 
there is something missing and we do not, cannot even know what it is because we have never known it. The world today feels so very wrong because it effing is. Hmm. And all the while, we are looking for someone to blame, someone to hold responsible. Governments, multinational corporations, banks, institutions, billionaires, anyone. The horrible realization, it is not anybody's fault. Everything is a symptom. Rage against the machine, and the machine will welcome it. Governments acting according to the unwritten rules of economic growth and cancerous, ever-increasing exploitation of environments and peoples. These rules not in any way diminished because of not being written down, but even more potent because of it. <clears throat> they are not mere rules, but ways of thinking, of living, of acting, of treating each other and the world around us. Capitalist realism permeating everything and constructing an illusory and yet all-encompassing social reality too strong to fail, seemingly eternal, forever. We blame governments because it is convenient. They are victims and perpetrators at the same time. <clears throat> Recently, while discussing the now ever-present issue of inflation and economic decline, the question of what the government should do about it came up. <clears throat> A friend of mine remarked something along these lines, well, what can our government really do about it? They can do nothing. Inflation is a global, multinational problem. There is nothing our little country can do on its own. He is right, of course. How can one fight a system? How can a well-oiled cog in the wheel fight the whole machine? How can one oppose a hyper-complex, incomprehensible web of causalities and relationships, we are, in the end, all just casualties. And then, <clears throat> before he dives into the second uh, half of his uh, good morning uh, essay, he has this long <clears throat> quote from the Fight Club. Not sure who, who wrote who the author of this long quote is, but it comes from the Fight Club. <clears throat> I see in the Fight Club the strongest and smartest men who have ever lived. I see all this potential and I see squandering God damn it, an entire generation pumping gas, waiting tables, slaves with white collars. Advertising has us chasing cars and clothes, working jobs we hate so we can buy shit we don't need. We are in the, we are the middle children of the history man no purpose or place. We have no great war, no great depression. Our great war is a spiritual war. Our great depression is our lives. We have all 
we, we have all been raised by television to believe that one day we will all be millionaires and movie gods and rock stars. But we won't. And we're slowly learning that fact. And we are very, very pissed off. Yep, back to Antonio Melonio. <clears throat> Corporations are just another symptom. How are they to blame? They do exactly what they are supposed to do. The only thing we have ever programmed them to do. What will it help to burn Amazon down, to destroy Nestle, the momentary relief of having destroyed these machineries of exploitation and destruction will soon be supplanted by the knowledge that others will take their place. Burning down banks will be great. It will feel great. Other banks will then take their place. In a kind of sense, there are more banks than people. Same for billionaires, Musk, Zuckerberg, Gates, Bezos, and all the others. They're only doing what we are permitting them to do. Everyone is an anti-capitalist in thought. Everyone acts like a millionaire. They have not only created this world of despair and replaced true happiness with the kind of happiness you can buy and sell, the kind of happiness you can project on graphs. No, they have also taken something very essential from us. They have taken from us the ability to do something, anything, about it. Capitalism is eternal. It has always been there. It will be there when we are long dead. They took from us the ability to resist and gave us useless proxies. They left us with impotence and apathy. How can one fight an illusion? How can one fight dogma? How can one destroy a self-perpetuating set of abstract beliefs? Adapting and dissolving everything into its internally inconsistent machinery to the point where anti-capitalism becomes capitalism, and activism turns into conservatism. The only thing left to us is the prospect of witnessing the inevitable collapse of the giant house of cards and being buried under it. Thank you, ah. Uh, Antonio Melonio for uh, <laughs> starting off another day and uh, that will just be part one of today's dip into despair on this snowy day and uh, since I'm obviously not heading out into this I guess I will sit around sit around in my seven foot by seven foot little bivouac, my little igloo, and uh, till I fall asleep in 16 hours. Ugh. But you know guys, I, I do have to sheepishly admit as long as you're looking out the window at it, you know, it is kind of pretty knowing that I'm actually getting the hell out of New York, baby. I will be getting the hell out of New York on January 20th, heading to the Yucatan in Belize. So now that I know 
that I'm getting the hell out of here uh, in six weeks. You know, somehow uh, I can enjoy the beauty of this for the last time in my life. I'm going to enjoy the snowy wonderland. Get out there and enjoy the snowy wonderland while you still can. Bye, guys.